Just President Mandakai said, Thorpe, and thank you very much for talking to Anchor in Law this afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Nalwanda. Right. Now, perhaps I should make a disclosure before we even start that uh, I represented you during the Constitutional Court Justice's complaint to the JSC, I think it was around May of 2008. Yes, that is so, and I appreciate that very much. You yeah. represented me well. There was a time when you led the team, mm -hmm. leading Masobu and others. You did very well. Thank you, Mr. Kamala. Yes, uh, until, of course, you brought an appeal to the Constitutional Court against the Supreme Court of Appeal judgment, and I took the view that I can't argue a case in front of justices who have an interest in the outcome of that very appeal. I remember very well and how right you were because they were conflicted and that was our position all along when the complaint first saw the light of the day. Mm -hmm. Our view was and still is, it is wrong for the court for judges to complain as a court because it puts them in a position whereby they would be conflicted because when the appeal goes to before them, they would have to recuse themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. There, there is, of course, another concept of a uh, automatic disqualification, which doesn't require a, an applicant to make an application for recusal. Yes. Yes. Now, let's go back to the beginning. Tell our viewers. Our viewers uh, comprises of judges, uh, practitioners, legal practitioners, and lay people. So, as we have this conversation, we should be mindful of that and, and try yes. not to be too technical in our answer so, so that uh, the ordinary people can follow the conversation. I will try my best to keep it simple. Thank you, JP. Now, um, tell us about who you are. Is Tagazeno and all of that so that people understand your background? All right. My name is John Shopper. I was born on the 19th of May, 1959. Stand known today as Watuosa. Mm -hmm. uh, shoppers come from Swaziland originally, or Samela, Mapengo, Tubeza, Tobezenda, Gonyes, as a Mafuosa, and Zenda, Oh, right. Yeah. That's where we came from, and obviously it was long before uh, colonization in those days. Uh, they, the shop people originate in what is known as Swaziland today. And uh, we were colonized, obviously, by Shaka, for lack of a better word. But for all practical purposes, I am, so to speak, now. And I was raised in a small town called Watuguza today. We used to walk to school. I used to walk to school six kilometers to school and walk another six kilometers in the afternoon barefooted. Mm -hmm. So we all I know all about poverty. We're basically raised poor. Yes, okay. Thank you for that, JP. Now tell the viewers about the day in the life of a teenage Manda guys. What was the typical day like? A typical day was waking up in the morning and attending to domestic chores. There were no taps in the farm where I lived. I, have, I would have to get up in the morning, go and fetch water, the same or from the fountain, and use that water to wash my body. My mother always insisted on fresh water every morning for her to make coffee, and she always drank joko tea. So typical, they get up in the morning, attend to domestic chores. Weekends were no exception, we had no time for sleeping out. There was always work to be done at all, either by way of heading cattle, or fetching water from the river, or fetching firewood in order to make fire, which obviously would be used to cook the food and to boil the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a typical day. School holidays, we would always work uh, at home and do and attend to domestic chores. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the luxury of sleeping out and going to movies like so many uh, children of our age. We were very poor. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, when you were in primary school, yes. whether it be lower primary or high, I'm not sure if you had those um, 
uh, those layers. It was a primary school. school. Yeah, yes. so primary school, higher primary school, high school. You obviously would have had subjects that you were partial to, that were your favorites. Yes. Which were those? My favorite subject was biology. I was very, very good at biology. In fact, for my metric, I had an A in biology. Ah. The other subject that I loved was history. In those days, it was obviously European history and South African history. I must say it opened up my mind because there is so much that we were taught in history, which on reflection is not true. Mm. It doesn't make sense to me now because I'm old and I'm beginning to look at things objectively. Could you give us an example of uh, something you learned in history at, at school that you consider not to be true? One of the things we learned in history, when you take any history book, it creates an impression that nobody lived in South Africa. When the infant Ripley came here, he found uh, this land vacant and, up and unoccupied. That's not true. We know that there were people of African descent. Even in this part of the world, we had the, the Sen and the Koi. There is no part of South Africa which was not occupied. But when you look at any history book, it creates an impression that nobody lived in Africa until the Alpha came in 1652. That is wrong. There have always been African people in this part of the world. There is not a single part of South Africa, which was not occupied by people of African descent. Mm -hmm. People's retort to that statement tends to be that the Khoisan people were here before, I suppose, those of us who are considered black African. What's your view on that? I, I've always considered the Khoisan as African. Khoisan people are the Africans, so it's no question about that. They may have lived in this part of the world, which is today known as the Western Cape, and spread uh, with the passage of time. But uh, black people like you and I, who have always lived in Africa, who are native to the African soil. We do not come from Europe, we do not come from India, we come from Africa, we are native here, we are born in Africa. So to the extent that perhaps the Khoi and the Khoisan people were concentrated in what is today known as the Western Cape, I cannot quarrel with that. But the suggestion that black people, African people like me, are not native to Africa is historically incorrect. We were all born in Africa, we are the natives of the African continent, just like the Khoi and the Sun, like the Khoisans, they are also Africans, just like us. You then um, successfully completed your matric yes, at, at what school? I was at Oshlange High School. Uh, Oshlange High School will be remembered. That's where the late president, uh, Nelson Mandela, cast his vote for the first time in 1994. Mm -hmm. The school has a very honorable history. It was founded by Dr. Langa Libanele Dube Mafuguzela who was also a leader of the ANC at some point. Mm -hmm. It is located north of Devon in a place known as Inanda. That's where I matriculated in 1978. It was straight A's, no doubt, or uh, as close as possible to it. Well, I would say pretty close to that, but it was an A's all the way. No, yeah. no, no, the system wouldn't uh, The yeah. system wouldn't allow it. I think the system, if we were Remember, we lived in very, very difficult circumstances. We're not spoon-fed. Uh, education for a black man is and has always been a struggle. So it was not easy to get those days. Firstly, English is not my first language. But the socio-economic factors as well. You have to travel, you go to school, weekends, you can't even study at home. I mean, it would sound like a joke when I say I once got hiding from my mother for doing homework at home. At home. She did not understand why I came from school and did homework. She mm -hmm. said, I'm lazy. Why didn't I do my work at school? <laughs> my answer was, Mom, this is homework. It's meant to be taken home. Mm -hmm. And I got a club for that. My mother, you regarded that as a chatting back. She didn't take kind to that until she understood the concept of a homework. Mm. So it has been exceedingly difficult for a black child, unlike uh, whites in South Africa, let the truth be told. It was always easy for them. Hence, 
it was very easy for them to get good marks at university, uh, even in school. It has always been easier for them. But for a black person, it's always a struggle. All right. So we'll pursue in the next segment your advancement to the university uh, level. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jacob.